Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Sir Spam28 here bringing you some more World of Warships closed beta action. Jumping into our tier 8 US heavy cruiser, New Orleans. I unlocked this just a couple of days ago. I've been having a really good time in it. I mean, cruisers are my style anyway. The US cruisers in particular, with good guns, good AA, good secondary. You can take the torpedoes on the Japanese, cru Japanese cruisers and keep them. No, just Porter. kidding. I still like the Japanese cruisers as well, but US cruisers are uh, more my style. So what we're going to do here in this New Orleans, I think just taking a look at the board. I'm going to load AP. Uh, that iceberg's going to get in the way, so we have to turn this way. I have this New Orleans with both my captain's skills and some of the optional upgrades that you can put on the ship into a um, pretty much AA platform. But given that we have two Lexingtons to wear, one Lexington, it seems like this is going to be a fairly dominant uh, air performance by our team. So I'm not too worried for my battleships as far as getting down there to provide an AA screen. And we didn't have a very good spawn point uh, to do that as well. I might still flex that way a little bit um, and just hang around kind of in this... Uh, D6 area in between these islands. Just, you know, some hard cover. See well, how things uh, shake out. And if we need to flex down and provide some air cover to the battleships, we will. But at the same time, if we see uh, tasty destroyers, of which they have three, and heavy cruisers, of which they have four, in the C and B area, we can also do something about that. We have a destroyer down in A, fast capping, which is good. Yes, it's called Alt, my friend. Uh, Ronnie wants to know if there's a hotkey to see what type of ship the enemy is. Yes, it's called press alt, and you get all the information, including health bars, the player, and the enemy ship. Uh, very, very good information to know. So hopefully he can make a good use of that and uh, provides him some more information in his tactical decision making as far as what he wants to be doing with his ship and his life. Looks like we got a Cleveland over there, and I spy with my little eye behind those two heavy cruisers, their lone aircraft carrier, that Lexington. If we can break through that direction, break on through to the other side, as it were, we can uh, do some damage. That uh, aircraft carrier is flexing back, and we're about to run around. We don't want to do that, so we'll uh, maneuver. And we have spotted everything on the enemy team. Now, the other upgrade I am running on this ship is the enhanced stealth. So the surface detectability range on this bad boy is only 11.2 kilometers, which is pretty fantastic. So it allows you to be sneaky sneaky when you're looking at the enemy deployment. Um, we've got a destroyer already in sea, but I think we're gonna flex that way and maybe shoot under the island that's in the north of the sea and flex back up to D if we need to. But these cruisers look like they're steaming in that direction anyway. But at the same time, Got a Cleveland and a Mitsuki and a Benson over here that need some tender loving care from these 8-inch guns. Uh, the New Orleans is equipped with 9 8-inch guns, a downgrade from the 10 of the Pensacola before it, but it has a wonderful triple turrets. Our team and the guns, I feel, just perform a little bit better than the guns on the Pensacola. Uh, I still love the Pensacola, of course, for uh, mostly sentimental reasons given that it is the class of the Salt Lake City, which is my home ship. Okay, this Cleveland, this Cleveland. We'll see where those shells go. We'll go ahead and uh, I think keep on this course. We'll see if we can't keep that iceberg in between me and this Cleveland. Eventually he's turning into us, which is good. We'll turn a little bit just to get a root turret in play. Those shells might go over him. I don't think I let him enough. On the and he's uh, zigzagging pretty well. I think those front batteries are aimed at us. Indeed, they are. So we'll start maneuvering as well. But we have this iceberg. It's kind of being a drag. He's maneuvering this way. So we'll start. We'll lead him. We'll lead him in a zig. We'll lead him in a zag. We'll get behind some ice here. And we get some good hits in on him. As we come around this iceberg, we should be able to finish him off with a salvo. Hopefully, that sinks doesn't die. In the meantime, get some good torpedoes off. So we're going to come around here. All of our guns pre-aimed on where he's going to be at this range. It's going to be pretty hard to miss. As soon as we clear this iceberg, we will give him the good news. Hopefully into his forward battery. Good damage there. He gets taken out. 
fight the torpedoes. And now we will go a destroyer hunting the on the other side of this lead. island. You can see we're under fire from destroyers, out of the smoke. But as he fires, he gives away his position just for a brief moment, which allows me to fire some shells. They unfortunately miss. Destroyers are dastardly like that. Now we are being spotted by that destroyer, obviously, as he keeps firing at me. Uh, these are 5-inch shells that I have angled fairly well, so these aren't going to be doing that much damage. As we charge in here, we do have the sea point capped, which is always nice. You can see 89 damage there. There he is. Hopefully, hopefully we can break through. And then we can uh, give that cruiser up there uh, the good news. That Pensacola, he's not going to be dead already. Okay, we got our bow into this torpedo spread, so this shouldn't be too hard to avoid. I also do have the rudder upgrade on this bad boy as well. We need to flex a little bit this way, and we should be good. Just get the stern out of the way, and boom. Bob's your uncle. There we go. That other destroyer is right around there. So as we come around this headland, uh, we do have a Nagato, though, which is a problem. And this, uh, I think it's the Sims. No, it's the Benson that I've been chasing. Still not being spotted. Uh, we've got an island in between us and that Nagato, which is nice. That destroyer should hopefully pop back up in our screen sometime in the near future. I don't want to go totally... Okay, there's this guy. Yep, the Benson. He's within the secondary range now. He's going to be in all sorts of trouble as these 8 inches start uh, giving him what for. At the same time, we want to definitely be turning to dodge this guy as our rear turret comes around in this direction. We'll see if we can't get on him as well. And we dodged out his torpedoes. Our front turrets are right around here for the Benson. Confirmed penetration. We see if we can't dodge this one as well. Yes, we're able to. And he's down. Now we'll start back he's up again as our destroyer. turrets come around this way and. See if we can't take him out as well. So Enemy destroyer found that is how you do taking a cap, pushing through, taking out the destroyer threat. All stations, concentrate fire on the target. Now we can go ahead and start turning around. Well, there's another destroyer up here that's giving our boys some trouble. They should be able to take him out though, and then cap D. I don't see how that would be a problem. So we're going to start heading south and see if we can take out some priority targets in this direction as well. We've got two battleships left. I do want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this full health Nagato, so luckily there's still some hard covering between me and him. But then New Orleans I am very excited about. At the same time, we could break through here and uh, see what we could do. But no, no, we're going to stick on this New Orleans. So we're going to keep this hard cover in between me and the Nagato. Uh, again, do not want to tangle with the battleship, especially at 12 kilometers. So we'll go ahead and break through in this direction and see if we can't uh, get that uh, enemy New Orleans down. We have a substantial points lead, as you might imagine. Okay, here we go. Here we go, he's gonna start turning, so we'll start leading him just like that. Uh, at the same time, as I pop out here, I'm gonna be in range of the Nagato, which is gonna be sad. But if I flex a little bit, the stealth mod should keep me pretty good. I'm spotted now at 11.1, .1, so I might as well give up the ghost fire a little bit but as I flick back in this direction I should start to get out of range of being spotted and while wow, he's actually going really slow and his turrets are actually facing the other direction so I can continue to turn at him right, continue to fire at him and now I should be stealth at 11.3 kilometers and I'm faster than him so I said Stay stealthed. We'll start maneuvering. I really, really, really am interested in uh, that New Orleans. So oh, it's hurt. Okay, he sees me. There's really nowhere to go. So I guess I just have to fight it out with him. I guess that's what I'm going to have to do. We'll see if the 8-inchers 
can stand up. Oh, plus it's about to get okay. That 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 even Our the odds a little bit. Inside. I think. Still got the points lead. I'm gonna flex a little bit with the starboard here. Uh, these rear are these front turrets. Really, really, really point back far, so you don't have to be. We're gonna we change speeds a little bit there as his other salvo was coming in. So one of those goes uh, in front of us, but we uh, I think need to get around this island again. Uh, cruiser versus battleship. It's a hard, it's a hard life. Luckily, our aircraft carrier is kind of keeping us in this fight. And we're able to successfully disengage and get away. Let's see if we can't give him some parting shots as well. I don't know where those are going, but we're about to win this game. So, uh, you can see how hard it is to tangle with a battleship one-on-one -on -one in a cruiser. And yeah, we do get some parting shots in there, get some more damage. Uh, it's just difficult. But we uh, are able to pick up the win there. Uh, we sunk a lot of enemy ships, and it was 2-2 uh, in cap points for a long time, so pretty equal there. So, the deciding factor was just the fact that our team was able to sink a lot more ships than them. You can see here we got uh, 244,000 credits almost 4,000 XP. Now this, I believe, is the first one of the day and is doubled. We can check that a little bit later, but we'll see what happens with the base XP as we go in. Second on the team, which is surprising, but uh, that Mahan did work 2,800... 2,082 base experience for him. Uh, we are in second with 1,691, so a pretty fantastic game, well above that 1,000 mark that we're always shooting for. The Pensacola underneath us with 1,657, so he also had a great game. And then the vast majority of our team above that 1,000 mark, which is what you'd like to see. That's the gold standard, I think, in both World of Tanks and in this ship, World of Warships, for a good game. You're trying to get a 1,000 base experience. And we had a couple stragglers down here, mostly the battleships. Uh, and then one Cleveland, which is surprising. I've been noticing that a lot. I don't know if it's just this morning and I'm playing early and there's a lot of people. Uh, battleships have not been performing well this morning. Um, I've, you know, seen battleships do do well in other games. Um, but the matches that I've been playing this morning, no. They've been kind of... Uh, they've been making unsound decisions that lead to them having minimal impacts in the game. I mean, these two are, were pretty close to the 1,000 mark. You got this guy at 500. Uh, this guy beat it with 1,300. So, I mean, not too bad, um, but I've been consistently seeing them come at the bottom of the list, well, which is sad because battleships are big and bold and beautiful, and they're lovely people too. And uh, you can do well. You can do very well on them. Uh, you just They, I think, are the ships that honestly, given how slow their turrets turn given the speed at which they go they require the most tactical foresight and that's something that not a lot of people have at this stage in the game and that's why i keep making these videos to hopefully show off some uh keen decision making um both before during and then a reflection period after the match so if we go into the detailed report we can see we got fired 135 shells only 35 or 37 hits um so not the greatest accuracy but hey we were mostly shooting at destroyers, which are very slippery beasts indeed. And they had a couple of uh, kind of mid-range engagements on the uh, ooh, the uh, cruisers. And then a mid-range to starting to get long-range engagement on a Nagato as we were both maneuvering. So, But mostly, most of those shots were aimed at destroyers um, and, and some cruisers. And the, the uh, New Orleans that we were firing at was very long-range indeed. So, 27 penetrations, 34,000 damage, not the biggest damage numbers, but you can see that our strategy in that game was to go in and contest B, and we indeed were able to not only cap it, but then push through and uh, really clear it of enemies, um, mostly being A, that Cleveland beforehand, and then B, those two destroyers that thought they were being clever and sneaky behind their smoke, but we said no. 
We're going to push right through. We're going to dodge all of your torpedoes several times and take both of you out with our main and secondary batteries. Secondary's got in the fight. 1,844 damage for them. We only shot down one scout plane. Like I said at the beginning of the game, this ship is set up with its modules for um, strong AA fire, but we had the skies dominated just with our two aircraft carriers to their one. So we didn't need to perform that role this game, and we were much better suited to actually getting in there and using the other thing that this ship has in spades, the 8-inch guns, to clear out a cap point, secure it for our team, and help provide beautiful points towards the victory. Damage received... We got hit 14 times with the AP for 7,100 damage and 3 times with the HE for 9,967 9, damage. So not too bad on that front. We still ended the match with most of our health. Again, credits and experience. You can see um, this was indeed 1.5 for the first win of the day. So base experience was, um, was uh, the 1,691. And then we get premium running, and then we 1.5 it for the first one of the day, and we end up with the 3,804 experience uh, total, which is a fantastic number, and that really helps out. You know, if the ship wasn't already fully researched to where I wanted it to be, it uh, really helps out with the module research. Um, if this was a premium ship, or if it was, uh, you know... Uh, if it had been, I, what's the word? When you research everything on it and research the ship above it, and it kind of essentially becomes a premium ship and that all of its experience goes from the free experience pool. It can also help out general research elsewhere. Also, this number translates to the amount of experience points that the commander is getting, so that means that uh, he's going to be able to get some more commander skills shortly. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that match. Again, just a tactical recap. We saw at the beginning of the game that... We did not need to perform an anti-aircraft screen for our battleships, being that we had the skies dominated just with the carrier dis, uh, difference between the two teams. Um, given our spawn point, and given what we know about the enemy spawn points on this map, being mostly that destroyers and cruisers spawn in the north and battleships spawn in the south, we decided to push kind of straight through um, and really look to contest the B and C area. We ended up pushing through and capping, I believe it was C, um, pretty much on our own with a friendly destroyer behind us. Um, the ships that got in our way were Cleveland on the our close side of the cap, so we put some good shells into him. And we would have finished him off if not for the Allied torpedoes that did the job before we could. And then we pushed through, capped the point, and chased those destroyers out of the point and, and really prevented them from, again, slipping through and uh, harassing our... Uh, our uh, aircraft carriers behind us because if you note kind of uh, the other game that I just put up a little while ago I'll link it in the video description where we were in a destroyer and we pushed through and harassed their aircraft carriers when they had the aircraft carrier advantage so we prevented that from happening we kind of corralled those destroyers we were smart in the direction that we kept our ship pointing avoided all of their torpedoes took out their destroyers and then flexed back southward because we had pretty much our team had pretty much cleaned up the north and then got in a one-on-one -on -one engagement with a Nagato which was not healthy for us so we disengaged from that uh, got some hard cover in between me and him as we looked to continue pursuing that heavy cruiser further south down the map and that's what we would have continued to do if the game had not ended at that point so I hope you guys enjoyed this match. Please uh, leave a comment below telling me what you think about it, what you think about the New Orleans heavy cruisers in general, uh, the strategy and tax tactics that I employed, what uh, you would have been different given what you saw on the mini-map or as far as deployments goes. And I hope you guys enjoy the video, and I will see you next time.